name of the Son, hallelujah. I, I want you to be a prophet unto two persons of their choice. In prophesy, in prophesy with a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion and a measure of authority. <sighs> Say to two persons, God is ready to anoint you with Holy Ghost power. Amen. You may be seated. I want to thank all the leaders of PFN who are here. In my only was a okay guitar lose your go. Oh, money about on our own guitar. We're mad. Get the name of your mother. Oh, baby, Bala. Way in a crayaka. Let's give him a good clap of free. Um, I've always traveled to any part of the world with uh, a woman who is my wife and who has remained a girl after 42 years of being married. Madam, can you come and greet the brethren? Praise God. It is only God that can do all things. That we have been on for these years is only God. That we will continue to do things is only God. I want to encourage all of us, once you are focused on God, there is nothing he cannot do with you. So I believe this meeting is not just another meeting. God has a special plans for all those who have made up their minds to be here. And I pray that that your desire, God will grant you in Jesus' name. Hey, engineer. I don't want to lose my voice in a way. This is my bank account. Improve the APS system. I'm going to ask you to listen attentively and intently and earnestly. Your ears are your express road to your healing and promotion and lifting and anointing and function. If I only was in all get tonting and lagani krondanda. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 2. I allow one of the leaders to read the play to us. I will request that you hang on every word I pronounce, that you meditate on every word I pronounce, that you digest and absorb every word I pronounce, that you probe every word I pronounce. Listening is an art. Not everyone that this thing hears. Not everyone that hears understands. Not everyone that understands celebrates. This thing is a gift and an art given to those who pant and pine and crave and hunger after knowledge. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 2. I would like one of the leaders to read it to us. Anybody? Look. Just read, sir. We don't have time. Read. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. And he said to them, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Since you believed, have you received when you believed? the baptism of the Holy Ghost? So they said to him, we have not so, we have much, not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. 
Oh, hold the line. In chapter 1 of the book of John's Gospel, verse 12, Jesus said with a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion, that as many as receive him, he'll give them power. What separates a man from the boys is power. What brings a man to a place of honor and promotion and lifting is power. What makes a man's presence to command attention is power. For more than 16 years now, the federal government had given me seven policemen a day. And so when I drive, nobody stops me. That's what power can do. If you have power, no witch will stop you. No wizard will stop you. If you have power, come usher, stop bringing in anybody who has come in now. All the bishops are seated. When you have power, you become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. Witches don't attack everybody. No, let me, I don't know if you know, there is a measure of fragrance of anointing that can rest upon you. Bullets will not shoot you. In Gombe, my chief of staff and myself will raise a song, an Igbo song. To what I am, Mama, and the power of God came down. A blind woman fell under the anointing and her eyes opened. Her husband began to weep like a beaten boy. The man ran to me and asked, what did you do? This woman had been blind for 20 years. The day I married her was the day she became blind. How could an ordinary song open her eyes? The man wept. The man said, I've spent every money I have generated the last 20 years on her. But Boko Haram boys were angry, which is okay by me. Everybody can't like me, I'm not a girl. When you're a man, you must have enemies. If you don't have an enemy, you're an idiot. We know you by the class of enemies you have. The next day they brought their grenade to bomb the place and the grenade will not respond. Why? There is a measure of anointing upon a man that gives him a fragrance of the peculiar concentrated presence of God. When there is a presence of God upon a man, that presence will mock anything that wants to mock you. In chapter 23 of the book of Numbers, verse 20 through 23, the, the, the Bible says, Lo, I, I have received commandment to bless the man that, that someone had planned to cross him. Balaam said to Balak, you paid me to cross Israel, but he who has the final, who, he who is the grand commander of power has commanded me to bless Israel. And I cannot reverse it, for he has blessed them. I cannot change it. He has said no perverseness in Jacob, nor has he seen any sin in Israel, for the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of the king is amongst them. As a believer, you ought to have what you call the shout of the king. When your enemies talk at the door, whether they're witches or wizards, they ought to hear God say, I'm already here. It is, it is not proper for you to boast of your parentage without evidence of that parentage. My second daughter is a lawyer. 
Policemen saw her in Lagos with large sum of foreign currency. And they asked her, young girl, where did you get such money? She replied and said, my father gave me money to pay my brother's school fees. They asked her, who is your father? She said, the Venoma is my father. And they replied and said, he can't be your father without buying you a car. And because you have no car, and you have been jumping from Molo bus, Molo bus to Molo bus, you are now under arrest. When you say you're a child of God and you don't have the evidence of those who are children of God, you're a pretender, you're a liar. Balaam said to Balak, the shout of the king is with them. If we return to chapter 39 of the book of Genesis, if we take verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, the Bible says, Joseph's master saw that the Lord was with him. Your husband must see that the Lord is with you if the Lord is with you. There are four things you cannot hide under the sun. Cough, love, pregnancy, and good money. Once you have money, people will know. Because your shoes will change. Once you have money, your means of mobility will change. Because money can buy you any type of vehicle you want. If you're pregnant, you can't hide it. If you're in love, you can't hide it. If you have cough, you can't hide it. The people of Samaria will ask, since you received Christ, have you also received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And they said what? No. We have so many and too many powerless Christians. As a result, witches can dance on their head and nothing will happen. Boko Haram boys came with their bomb. The bomb did not detonate that day. A day after we left Gombe Equa Church building, they returned and they brought down the whole building. They called me and asked me, Reverend, why didn't our bomb detonate when you were in that place? I asked them, do you expect me to reply? They said, yes, no, 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 no. Only an idiot will enlist his, in his enemy's army. A war is raging between Boko Haram and believers. I can't answer any of your questions. They say, I want to visit you, New York. Please, you are welcome. My big man arranged a place for them. They flew in and slept there, but I made sure we did not meet. I know you, I know you are a member of the Pentecostal church. I know you are born again, at least your name is Mary. The question is, have you received Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Have you received power? Well, that brings me to the next level. There are three levels of anointing. There's what we call lepers anointing. Every man who has had the first work of grace, you've been born again, you have what to call lepers anointing. But every man who has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have to say what to call priestly anointing. The third anointing is reserved for a few people, not everybody. There are men, and there can be more than three in Nigeria, who if they speak, Madam, Madam, look up here. These are children, they are normal people. Look up here. Satan has a way of distracting us. I don't know whether in everybody of shattered focus cannot make history. I'm not asking whether you have received, I mean, I'm asking whether you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, let me put it, have you received power? I will spend the rest of my three days, two days here to show you the different versions of power 
and these different forms of power. Let's see the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 49. What does it say? 24, 49. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. Go on. But tarry ye in the city of the, Jerusalem. The, the, Jesus said to them, wait <laughs> until you are prepared. Wait until you are sufficiently and fittingly and adequately anointed. Wait until you are prepared for the battle ahead. For life is a battle. Life is a battle. He said to them, wait. I will equip you. I will prepare you for greatness. I will prepare you for success. Men and brethren, if Abraham is our covenant father, we have no business with poverty. Why? The Jews, everywhere they are found, are the richest. They are not only rich in money, they are rich in creativity, they are rich in imagination, they are rich in wisdom, and they are rich in favor. That is why the whole world hates them. But here we are in Nigeria. We are hated like the Jews. But we don't have the evidence of those whose father is Abraham. Something is wrong. What did I say? Something is wrong. Let's rush to chapter 3 of the book of Exodus. We take the 222. The Bible says, if a man begins his redemption journey. When you give your life to Christ, the Bible says there are two things God will do for you. Number one, he will bless you with favor. I'll, I'll take up that tomorrow. Once you are born again, heaven will bless you with favor. But what is favor? Favor is the presence of God going with you everywhere you go. The book of Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, the Bible says, and the Lord was with him, and he was a prosperous man. God cannot be with you and be owing everybody and be borrowing here and there. It's now 52 years since I began my work with Jesus, I have never borrowed money from anybody. I never borrowed money from any bank. Even when I'm building a project of more than 500 million naira, I, I have never bought banks are harassing me. And I say, hey, hey, I am of the seed of Abraham. We don't borrow. We don't owe anybody. God says I'll give you favor. Can we run to the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 22? Somebody help us. The book of Luke chapter, I'll come back to chapter 3 of the book of Exodus. All I want you to write down somewhere is heaven must bless me with favor. I'll, tomorrow I'll take it up and show you what favor is. Yes, anybody? 22, 15. I said chapter 2, 52. And Jesus grew in, in, in wisdom, in favor, and in, he grew. What does that mean? Everyone listening to me, it means that this God will give you an ever-increasing favor if you can talk to your local government chairman from your house today. Tomorrow, God will bring you to where you, can, where you can talk to your governor from your house. Next month, God can bring you to where you can talk to the president from your house. I didn't know I could give private covenant to governors until recently. I'll, I'll go into that. Let me, let me not be tempted. But I'm saying... 
once you become a born again child of God, <clears throat> heaven will bless you with favor. Amen. And what is favor? Favor is you enjoying the peculiar concentrated presence of God. The man who has power, I said after favor, the second thing uh, God has promised us, the same book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, it says, I'll give the people favor. Can you raise your hand and say, God shall give me favor? Say it well, somebody. God shall give me favor. God shall give me favor. And it shall be an ever increasing favor. In the same line, the Bible says, I'll give the people favor in the south of the Egyptians. It shall come to pass when you go, you will not go empty handed. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that circulates in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. What does that mean? God is saying, No child of God shall ever go through life empty handed. <laughs> you didn't say them in well. You don't need money to generate money. You need wisdom and knowledge and understanding. When you have favor, God will bring you to where you can see gold in the trash. The man that, that founded, manufactured Coca-Cola, a young Christian makes the man and said, if I double your business, how much will you give me? And they agreed on 10, um, in every one dollar, 10 cents. And they agreed, they signed. And the young man said to them, bottle your Coca-Cola drink. As we speak now, for every hundred dollars they make, that family con collects 10 cents. No, for every 100, they, they collect one dollar. Would they ever be poor? No. As a child of God, God has placed you where you can see gold in a trash. No, 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 no. I, I don't know whether you know that David saw Goliath. Israel saw Goliath. The king of Israel saw Goliath. David's brother saw Goliath. But David saw what others could not see. That is the mark of a man that had favor with God. Every born again child of God is an extraordinary person. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is extra. And I declare beginning tonight, your life shall be an extraordinary life. They asked the believers in Samaria, have they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is something waiting for you to collect. Something that God will renew for you every day. But let's go back to chapter 3 of the book, the verse 21 and 22 of the book of Exodus. I want you to prophesy to yourself and believe it in your heart beginning this night. You will not go through life empty handed. Yeah. Why? Every born again child of God has 1,500 destiny helpers scattered all over the world. And God can use any of them to meet you at the point of your need. Where are 
I live in Uyo is where the rich and the famous live. One of my converts became, became governor and came to look for me and he was told I was a tenant to a high court judge. He called me and said, my father and the Lord cannot be a tenant to anybody. Go to the housing estate. Choose a house of your choice. Pay as God prospers you. Spread over 20 years. And I said to him, Your Excellency, I don't need a house. I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord. And we shall be raptured. My wife raised up her hand. I asked her, Hey, I am the executive chairman of this marriage. When I speak, it is final. She said, I have something. She raised up her hand higher. The governor recognized her and said, Madam. And she said, I want a house. I want to be raptured from my own house. And the governor gave her a form to fill. The general manager protested that that house was no bed for preachers like Oma. And the governor said, sorry, you have lost your job. You are not relieved of your job as general manager of the housing estate. Right where you're sitting this night, there are destiny helpers of yours waiting for you to do one thing believers don't seem to know. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you a good measure, praise that shaking and running over. Shall men, who are those men? They are your destiny helpers. Yes, a man called me and said, when I first came to your house, I was weighing almost everybody. After your prayer for me, I am now the fifth richest man in Nigeria. And God has asked me to buy you six expensive jeeps. Four will be coming to your place in one day. The fifth one will come later. The fifth one, he paid 52 million to buy it. My wife said to him, stop sending jeeps to our house. We don't have a place to park jeeps. The young man replied and said, push all the jeeps you have. This one is a covenant gift from God. He said, when I met your husband, I was owing here, and now I have three refineries across the world. Every time this man speaks into my life, my creativity will increase. My opportunity, my favor will increase. My wisdom will increase. I'll give more. This is why Satan hates us. This is why Boko Haram would like to kill us. But already, if you're observant, God has sent angels to stop Boko Haram from coming to the east. We're preparing for great for one million man crusade in Kaduna. One lousy malam, malam gave a prophecy that if I be allowed to preach in Kaduna, that Muslims will have 23 years setback. So boys were invited to lynch me at the airport. Everybody wants to kill Omar. They don't know I am one man that death has rejected. <laughs> 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 yeah. I want you to know who you are. I was sleeping that time. God said, Oh, my, don't fly into Kaduna. Drive to Abuja, fly to Abuja. Let your escort vehicles and all the policemen I have given you drive to. Abuja to receive you. You have a friend in Abuja who has a, who has a security detail. Let that detail follow you. Driving to Kaduna with so many 
um, pilot cars and police escorts. By the time you arrive, I will have prepared the ground for you. We arrived to Abuja, we drove into Kaduna in a long convoy. The governor of Kaduna State, uh, Marukafe, had begun to fast and pray for me. A Muslim, <laughs> he said, oh, man, I didn't want them to kill you. <laughs> he said, the boys met him and said, um, that man must die here. And I, he told them, this is the day of, of the Pentecostals. If you harm him, they will bring Kaduna down. And the boys said they did not care. You, God cannot be your father and be crawling through life. God cannot be your father and you be borrowing and owing everybody. Because the Bible says in chapter 1 of the book of James, verse 5, if any one of you lacks wisdom, but what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to see the unprotected forehead of your Goliath. And to find the stones will be to bring down your Goliath. I was 10 years when my father was killed. My mother was poisoned. And God should be a tomato seed to plant. And the seed bore fruit every week. I made so much money at that tender age. My grandmother couldn't believe it. The same God told me to go to Yukun and buy these local robbers. Ask a woman to cut the bus for me. Ask my classmate to buy the bus with their school fees. Well, I just said buy. I didn't say with their school fees. I buy with money. And they used their school fees to buy the bus. At a tender age, I found I could create wealth. I first brought these instruments to the church in the East, 1972. I made so much money out of these things here. I was shocked that I could generate so much money. One day I said to my wife, I have more than my head could take. I grabbed my hammer and smashed my recording studio to pieces, my copying machine to pieces. My wife said it was an attack. I told her I attacked myself. I wasn't called to make money. I was called to preach a man will come looking for me. Nobody among the preachers would ever say, Omar has ever sent a letter asking him to give me money for anything. People begged me to accept a man I prayed for, a, a member of uh, Baptist Church Lagos. I had a program for them. 
And the man gave a lot of money to support the program. The next day, his general manager sacked him. He ran to me. I was crying. And I said, hey, stop crying. What's the problem? He said, after all that I gave yesterday, they have, hey, shut up your mouth. You are going to succeed that man. You are now the next general manager of Ransom Rocks. <laughs> he asked me how. Look at this bush man. God has 250 million ways of solving one problem. I don't know the one he will use. But you're the next general manager of Ransom Rocks. Two weeks after the workers union accused that other man of embezzling their money. Then the director flew into Nigeria from US, not from London, and asked to know who will succeed him. Everything appointed at that brother. When he came to thank me, I said, hey, hey, hey I just seen as in a video clip where you be became the regional manager in charge of 13 African countries. He began to cry. When God blessed him as the regional manager of Ransom Rocks, he built a solid building for me in Lagos and asked me to relocate to Lagos. Look at this man. And we had a magnesi. So because I prayed for you, I will now follow you. There are people who don't look for money, money looks for them. Because the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, what others look for? What others die for? What others crave and pant and pine out after will come looking for you? I, I wish you know who you are. This night, my prayer is that you may know who you are. You have no business crawling on the floor. Where you are sitting is not your seat. Your seat is at the king's palace. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So we drove into Kaduna. And believers in Kaduna had mobilized 19,000 90, people. Muslims fear crowd. And me, I was ready to, to, to increase my nuisance value. <laughs> they said, when I, when, when I say now power of God move, and people die, that I call them back to life. That if, I, if a Muslim dies, that I will not call him back to life. So they left me alone. They, they asked them, have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And Jesus said, wait until you receive this great gift. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17, verse 18, and verse 20. Who is the man that has this power? What are his privileges? Right where you are, I have one prayer for everybody here tonight that God may give you a gift of hunger for the gifts of God. When I speak of hunger, I'm speaking of hunger that won't let you sleep, that won't let you eat. When in my days as a young preacher, I used to go without food one month in every three months for good 15 years. There were days when we had great, I was here in November 1984, in your stadium. I was in a bar stadium, the same 84. Do you know there were days I preached and passed out, had a blackout. And my wife would cry and say, I don't want you to die. And I would say to her, I'd rather die than be a powerless, poor, hopelessly poor, wretchedly poor, stupidly poor preacher. If God will not anoint me, let me die. Even when we had greater Lego for Christ crusade with a choir of 5,000, with a prayer team of 23,000 people, with 83 more bus running every day for eight days, I fainted, I, had, I passed out, I came back saying to God, if you can't anoint me, 
let me die. Because the only qualification for all the great things of God is hunger. It is not only the qualification, but the pre-qualification, the prerequisite qualification. Why? Every promise God has made has an instruction attached to it. If you don't ask, God will not give you. What am I saying? My greatest pain in Igbo land is that the average Igbo woman and the average Igbo man is the greatest inventor of excuses. And yet we have no excuse for being full of excuses. A man, a man of excuses is a man of failure. Tonight, you must join order to say to God, anoint me. <laughs> In 1986, I was preparing for greater battle for Christ to save with a choir of 6,000. And I was on a fast. And God said to me, stop, let your long fast. Because at that time, I used to be as fat as a broomstick. God said, stop, I'll give you 100 angels. Everywhere you go, speak, and I'll do it. I heard our bishop say, you know, sometimes people, people copy me. What they don't know is that imitation leads to limitation. They copy me, but they can't produce the same results. You know, do you remember it was in your stadium here in Wherry. Your governor kept mocking and slandering God. And I said to him, Your Excellency, you can mock woman, slander me, but not God. What's wrong with your head? He asked me, how did you hear? I said, God opened my ears to hear what you were saying in your car. You said the only miracle you can believe is to see people born crippled, stand up and walk. And your excellency, three shall walk this night without prayer. Hey man, what a clean on all on your own, what they call me, she on your own. If you were there that night, remember the first set of cripples were twins. <laughs> remember that was the third one. And the governor began to cry. I also cried. My friend Ukebu cried. Because the second cripple did not walk only. He ran. I don't care which family you come from. This doctrine of family foundation is arrant nonsense. It is not biblical. Okay, can I read what the book of John chapter 9 verse 2? Let me hear the book of John chapter 9 verse 2. What does it say? And his disciples asked him. His disciples him, asked him. Say, say Master, who Master, did say? Who's this sin? This man or this his man who was born blind that he or his born. parents. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered. He answered. Neither had this man said. Neither had this man said. his parents. Or his parents. But that the works of God. But that the power of God should may, be manifested. May be manifested. Yeah. Hey. I come from a family where my father never went to church. My father used to say to me, I didn't send you to church. I sent you to school. My father would say to me, the white man brought the church to keep us poor. Don't go there again. My father went as far as the Korana to enter into covenant with the demon in the Korana. You know, in the Korana, when they play Ekbe, they rise, they, they grow taller. When they play upon, they grow taller. My father came from a family of barren people. In an attempt to beat barrenness, he went there. Every time a child was born in our house, a snake will glide to the child's bed. Along with the snake will be a rabbit. Seven days after, my father would raise a cock and the snake would slide away. If God can show his son grace and blessings, God will give you grace and blessings. My father had eight wives, not one, not two, not three, eight. <laughs> Do you know I went to Canada? 
I told the chief of the color that I'm going to banish this your stupid idol here. He asked me, Oma, are you not afraid that this juju will kill you? And I said, no, that's it. That juju knows me, and I know that juju. Let power meet. The lesser power shall bow to the greater power. Beginning tonight, you must confront whatever confronts you. Oh, I'm not doing well because my father was a native doctor. Jesus says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? When we speak of power, I have said that power means, okay, let's take the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. I am saying that power includes enough money to eat what you want to eat, to buy the shoes you want to buy, to pay the rent of the house of your choice, to take care of your parents and those who depend on you. Poverty is not evidence of power. And the Bible says the principal thing in life is wisdom. And this God is begging you to come and ask for wisdom that he may give it to you. But no man is a wise man who is not a merchant of knowledge. Beginning tonight, as a child of God, you must part after God and pine after God and crave after God and hunger after God. For God is the only one who reveals himself and remains a mystery. Allow me to make an announcement I want to make this night. All of you who are listening to me, by my spoken word, you have become the main woman of your family, the main man of your family. Can you do me a favor? Stand up and say to four persons, I will not go through that empty handed. Before we take 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, can I still surprise you more? Let, let's go to the book of Job, chapter 33, verse 14 through 16. Men and brethren, God runs a school for all his children when they sleep upon their beds. Madam, stop giving me this simple man's excuses. When any woman practices witchcraft on you, rise up and practice Holy Ghost craft on her. We, have, we use helicopter to drop hampers in Oko. Native doctors got angry. I threatened to deal with me. Ah, woman, I like trouble. I like trouble. I like trouble. Because we all grow by the problems we solve. If you have no problem, you can't have a test money. Yes. If you have no problem, you can't grow. Yes. Anyway, small boys, small problems. Big men, big problems. <laughs> I, told, I told the native brothers in Oko, Oko is close to Newi. I said to them when I see, to your mama, your juju forest will go up in flames and we'll burn for 21 days non-stop. Men and brethren, power belongs to our God. <laughs> we had a crusade in Isugu, and little daughters were threatening me. My hand fell into their shrine, and the juju ran away. 
The elders came to me and said, the Jews said he will not come back except you bring a dog and a dog, a, a, a ram and, and a, a goat. And I asked them, the Jew that ran away and the one that did not run away, who will bring peace offering? Answer for me, who? The one that ran away. So I asked them to bring me all those things they have enumerated. Or else they will, they, will, they will fire on the mountain. I'll banish their God. <laughs> Isn't it funny that you do run right away because of ordinary hand pills? Did you wonder Jesus say if there's any power, that that power is with him? And he said, I'll stand behind you with that power, with the armies of heaven with the angels of heaven, with the resources of heaven, why will you therefore be crawling? I was driving out of Obusi. Three cars blocked my way. They said, you made our sister barren, and we're here to deal with you. Me? They said, yeah, late in the night. I was alone in my brand new car. Who is your sister? They gave me, ah, oh, I suspended her. Some years ago, and she asked me who will implement the suspension. And I said to her, the Holy Spirit will, and you remain barren until you repent. Ten years after, she was still barren. When the brothers told me, I said to them, uh -uh, if my spoken word made her barren, my spoken word will kill three of you now, except to move your cars out of the way. I want you to hear me. Christianity is an honorable, powerful experience. I'm still here. <laughs> Are you still here? Yes, sir. I, I had a program in Amangu, and the Akbang said if I showed up, that he would leave the village. The young man said, if our juju is afraid of this man, we want his God. So the young man invited me. They asked me, Are you afraid of the elder? I said, I'm afraid. I fear no man, because this God is behind me. I went and I told them, for honoring this God I preach, by my spoken word, this your bad road shall be tied. Yes. I went to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and verse 18, and verse 20. I have not forgotten. That's why I have a big head. What does he say? He says, and what? These signs shall follow them that are pastors. Okay, that are apostles, that are prophets. No. You shall follow who? Yes. In 1985, I was smuggling Bible into China. I had to smuggle Bibles into China. I've done so many crazy things for the gospel and the kingdom. I was not going to be able to smuggle Bibles into China. Yeah, be asking how much you done. I gave you in China for twenty years. <laughs> we left Hong Kong and got into Canton. They asked us to place our suitcases on their machines. That Bibles in the suitcases, the machines will tell the story. I saw all the high points of my life. I remembered all the good things in Nigeria. All the good people of, I asked, is this how I'll end my life? I said, my friend, speak in tongue. What is speaking in tongue? Speaking in tongue is you calling for reinforcement from the commander in chief to send people to help you. Send angels, not people. So I began to speak in tongue. My friend, I said, speaking in tongues, going back and forth. 
the chief presiding custom officer walked up to me and asked me, are you a native doctor from Africa? <laughs> Our five machines have all at the same time. What type of dangerous man are you? And I said, hey, hey, if you don't want trouble, just allow me to continue with my job. He asked me, who wants trouble? Carry your trouble and go. <laughs> my, my wife uh, captured me when she said, I beg in the name of that Jesus to preach. Let's go. So I went. We drove from that place to Pobo Junction and overtook us and blocked us. They said to me, we know what we gave you. You can't reach with you alive. Allow us to give you another thing to drink. I said to them at the count of two, if you don't run away, that prayer that was suspended, we prayed now. The Bible said, if you drink any deadly thing, now any deadly thing can be any deadly thing. It's not yours to find out what type of deadly thing. We ate in a woman's house and we saw a ring in the soup. I tried to block the ring with stockfish. My wife pulled the stockfish away and ate. We lit the drinks of the soup, prayed for the woman and left. The next morning she came asking me, did you see any ring in the soup you ate? And I said, yes. She asked me, why didn't you complain? Madam, I don't know how to cook. I thought the latest way to cook is to cook and add rings. So me, I ate and gave thanks to God. Take your seat. Tomorrow night, I will use the Bible to show you for coming to this mystery and for listening to me. You have become too dangerous for anybody to handle. We are back to chapter 16. Let's go to verse 18. What does he say, sir? Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. No, okay, move on. And if they drink no, any... move on. Okay, no, we will stop now. Sorry, sir. And they shall lay their hands... Hands on the sick, and they wait, shall wait, wait. recover. Why have anybody who has a hand? Declare and prophesy and say, if I lay this hand on any sick person, he shall recover. He shall recover. <laughs> Sit down. My mother was sick for six months, could not urinate or ease herself. They sent for me. They asked me to carry her to the nearest hospital. And God asked me, Ma, what will the doctor do for her that I cannot do? Raise your hand over her. I went and said, Ma, kneel down. I raised my hand over her. My mother fell under the anointing like a pack of cards and slept off. I left her. 
when she woke up, she eased herself for the first time in six months. She came to my room and asked me, I thought Jesus died, but to use his name to pray for me. I told her, the miracle you saw shows it's alive. She said, when you raise your hand over me, a flame came down from heaven. I became afraid of you, my son. What was it that I saw? Ma, will you give your life to Christ? She said, I'm ready. This is a woman who had persecuted me, persecuted my pastor, said to my pastors, for turning my son into a woman, I'll kill all of you. She gave her life to Christ that day. And I said, Ma, you're my biological mother, but I'm now your spiritual father. This awesomely awesome God said, this is your hand that looks ordinary. Because you're now a child of God and have received baptism of the Holy Ghost, this your hand has become a means through which God can release his power. The power of God is released through two means, spoken word and the ministry of laying on of hands. This your hand can bring healing to your own children can bring healing to your parents, can bring healing to everywhere you go. Are you still here? Yes, Why don't you go to verse 20 of chapter 16? What does it say? And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word. The Lord was walking with them. With signs following Tonight, I will, not, I will not pray for miracles until tomorrow. I came late, and I came tired. I'm as tired as a pregnant night nurse. My wife is a nurse. She is a nurse. She is a nurse. She is a nurse. She is a nurse. But tomorrow, she will be what the new woman calls the men, the men. Hear this my sentence. It is not what happened to you that matters, but what happened in you because of what happened to you. We don't measure our enemies by their number. We measure them by the size of our God. You have no business with failure and poverty and sin. Sons of native doctors from my village said they were coming to kill me, kill my wife and my children, which was wonderful to me. The question I asked was, what will God be doing while they kill Oma, his wife and children? So I sent my police escort to the neighboring village and said to them, we're about to fight a battle above your class. As we were driving back, the same driver who brought us this night was my driver. He, he, he said, uh, sir, they are very mean you. Ask him to shut up his mouth. I belong to somebody. He cannot watch these people humiliate me. He said, I don't want to die in your village. Hey, who are you talking about dying? As they got close to us, they ran back. They said they saw me with 1,000 soldiers. As we were running, some had dislocation, some had eye problem. All kinds of things happened. The elders asked them to return and apologize to me. When they got to my gate, they said they saw those angels again all over the place. And they were to
I'll call you to keep up all this crowd to crowd ten when miracles happen. Of the aircraft, I'll tell you when to play, when not to play. Can somebody say, All my problems sit down? For I want to sing to the glory of my God. And you will tell it to the world, and you will tell it to the world, you will tell it to the world, and you will tell it to the Oh, <laughs> 
please be, be seated. We are going to take the last Bible verse. I have come to announce that God has banished premature death in every family. Let's see the book of Isaiah 65, verse 19 through 20. You must read it without bias. Bias is the worst enemy of knowledge. When Jesus cried on the cross of Calvary, men, who were men of God who were buried in Jerusalem, their graves opened. That was God saying, premature death is banished. I, I want to make a very beautiful sentence. You become what you believe in. Do you know there was a time I had problem, my heart was beating at the rate of 175 times per minute, per second. My doctor said, oh my reverend, you're about to die. Ask him to shut up his mouth. People like me don't die like ordinary men. <laughs> Have you seen where God placed us? You must stop grumbling. Stop calling yourself on your watcher. Stop saying, Oh, yeah, hold on, Nanya. Joba, hold on, Nanya. Come, hold on, say, Macho. In my ignorance with terrible disease. When you say I am suffering, you are saying today I'm suffering, tomorrow I shall suffer, every day I will suffer. And the book of Numbers 14:28 says, Whatever you use this your mouth to say concerning yourself, heaven will do it to you. My, my uncle, Umuya Nagala Beke, Umuya no Nagala Beke, I seen her before Nala Hashia, Amwala Mre, when Nema Umage Lim. Look at this bushman. Those are not Chuck Umuhagala Beke, Umugana, Gahina, a water goro Mugo Forger. You know, soon he died. I died over nothing. This your mouth has power of life and death. Speak of those things which are not as they are, and they shall come to pass. The doctor, Yom Kabamo, will see another doctor, Mitchell, and have my car come here. When you empower, bewa, na panebe, see, I bet I get up my car. I said, Kelly Mob will say, Hey, happen, happen, my car, car, when I eat the way car, coconut, but let me here. In my cheap borrow the next morning, six doctors be home, but we go. I will not die like an ordinary person. If I got exhausted because the exhaustion can kill. The doctor who saw me examined me and said, Reverend, <laughs> you can't make it. He said, Doc, can you shut up your mouth? People like me don't die like God. He said, only you don't know what we saw. Hey, 
Blessed are the ignorant, for they will not worry about what others have seen. One way, poor governor. One way, poor you may plan, have a broom girl, I became. I'm telling you, I'm doctor, some. I said, you will only get one head. Doc, stop that nonsense. Because I'm, hey, in way, I have a drum license. I said, Mama, I'm going to get me. I said, Mama, I'm going to get a job. I said, I'm going to get a job. When they run shoes, shoes that maybe okay, Missy Lear. Then they roll along the water cream thing in a lab, okay, and they call my NND doctor source on a chip. Say, hey, let me give you first lecture. All the professors here, bias is the worst enemy of knowledge. Whatever my brother told you, forget it. Examine me with clear mind. So they took me from one ultrasound bed to another, to this, to that. They came out and said, Reverend, you are not sick, only you don't know how to rest. This my brother-in-law, who had declared me a dead man, began to dance. State are governing. I know how many people are going to war, man. Take your seat. Um, when I only came to, I asked them to refund the money I paid for the bed that signed to me. They said, "No, we will not refund you the money. It's a punishment for not knowing how to rest." So, ni beke ka jekum reta. Sorry, I just want to leave you with that line. I don't know one week no leba monogi. Then I come back to Ariella. Then I buy Baha Bagariella. We are going to the book of Isaiah, sixty-five, verse nineteen through twenty, and I'll do two more things and let you go. A man may ma obachi doom nandro wachineke wo onyozi nke chineke uwe tarago wama na ngozi iwama no ongo na mbulielu. Today is a messenger from God to bring blessings to you. Yes, sir. And I will rejoice, I'll rejoice in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. And I'll joy rejoice in, in my people. people. And well, the voice I don't of know whether you know that not every child makes the mother and the father happy. Yeah. Only a successful child. Yeah. And by that spoken word there, God will rejoice in you. Yeah. Read on. Read on, sir. And the voice of weeping shall be no more. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, take the next line. What does it say? No, the voice of crying. Now the voice of weeping goes out to God. Say, man, her boss say, I got no plan, no logozo. I got no real plan, no logozo. Go on, sir. There shall be no more days and infant of days. No, no, no. It simply means God is declaring tonight that you will not bury your child. Yeah. 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 But 
Why? Because laughter is you saying, he who is in me is greater than all my enemies. Laughter, laughter is you saying to Satan, if you push me down 10 times, I'll bounce back 20 times. Laughter is you saying it is not over until it is over. Laughter is you saying I'm not an ordinary person. <laughs> laughter is you saying this God is great. Seta Gawani who made up all the phone jog on there, see a odd day bube. If I find any new day because odd day bube, hey we we we. So mama, what is there in Nigeria to make you say it is fantastic? Na waha na. A blind man does not see the treasures around him, and it is not where you are that defines who you are. It is who you are that defines where you are. Auru beke no ya won ke ma. Asa won auru ndi beke no ya amo ke ma. Last year in the Canada minimum the citizen. Sim ko ha ga court. Sim ma no ko la yo so. Nwa fu igboku nu ge me onye citizen nu. Nu na auru na wa anya oke. Ke ha ji mem citizen. I will program the men of Canada and I will for 20 years. AGA go put it on that program, Royal University of Koforido. In Ghana. So here I go, how can I be a patron who did go? So I want you to be okay. But I got caught in Alhamdulillah, Nigeria. How much I did it at home? You know, we be mara makara e ba ino. Na nu ihe mpuru. O ma bo de dum di ana cho onye bi na America ha ga lo. Cho onye bi na Nigeria e ma e bo bi. Mana ihe na eme. Mana mo na ezu ihe. Mana mo na ezu ihe. You might know that you're a pretty girl is not a guarantee you have a good marriage. You may end up marrying a stupid man who will turn into a punching bag and beat you silly. Yes, I sorry, I'm getting excited. I'm sure my wife is counting time for me. Uh, let's take the last line of that great book. Yes, sir. Our reader. Yes, sir. No, an old man that had not filled his the book days. Of no, the book of Job chapter 14. Sorry, I promised you a Bible passage that shows we have a school. And that school starts tonight. Job and when Ola Pukwon go to Onye. Now I'm going to a class. Job and then I'm going to go to Let's finish that place. Go on, sir. For the child shall die an hundred years old. The Bible says that child in your, the younger child in your house shall die at the age of 100 years. It may not get them to 100 years. Now, Eddie, where a ruler can go away. Of where? Name on the 97. Yana Ginche, Gitchena, Nakujele, where I bought. Only not get them to 100 years. 
But I want you to declare, I will not die like ordinary men. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 33, verse 14 through 16. Elekulayana clock, and I home every day. Tambira. Only you do a logic, got much and could do much of it. And I read your poor body. Nina, it is Seba, Gabu or Magadi. It is Seba, Gabu Sibo Dino. It is Seba. Gabe e gono. Ige seba gabu woma ni woma na bile mono. Nde asimu e ga womad. Eli nge mela handola. Nde asigi o ga chot ke he gatara. Nwe de he ha horo. Yes. Job 33, 14 through 16. For God speaketh, For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet twice but man perceiveth it, 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 it not. In a dream, but now in a dream, in a, in a vision, vision of the, of nights, the night, when deep sleep when this upon followed it. upon man, while slumbering upon your ears, he opened your ears and seals your instructions. Because God prospered by instruction, he opened your ears and sealed your instructions. Omona onye jova na tuziraka one men komani henile. Onye jova na tuzira atuzira ka ona ona wezi bodi. Ino megi de ona odu ne luisi munye ya eli we tiengu. Se akule. Melo rongwa imohoro baham bebne buono one month in every three months. Masi ya awezo kui di me ige som buono tuongwa. Man, you to to man, can he hear man? Can one keep ready? I'm not sure who Jova. Now, by then, Jova put them no one. So, my, 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 as a happy career in the Borolotcher, or talking with food crusade, happy. Go on, born in a boo. Why I beg by a buono? Why in the room, the other woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I may have graduate from the labor room, she'll suffer no more. Masia, ne. Chief Judge Quebella, he had a Magiriwa. He took okay, Nagacho toke. Gacho, Nagacho Tango. How will I want in a real Jikrela? Yes, you want your book one watch. Imamu ocha na tori kwe mana. Tore ya mama.
All those who want to know Jesus personally and intimately and experientially and empirically and livingly and as a living reality. Don't go to Kahajin to her. You fair na canaba there. Say, I'll get your tea, I'll get your go. Get me can laha chairs. No hidden na tomoto. I'm a jihan ye feganaka. But I need me to go near when go there again. I won't kendo. Go be through all up upon our balea. In the heaven of Jiki, bear with one baby and our maggie. Mom, it is not every eye that looks that sees. Not every eye that sees understands. Not every eye that understands and appreciates. Not every heart that appreciates celebrates. A bibber and no lumna balea. No blana choke, any wega choy. Echa ke me guse ba ba re he na bara ge mba mba Amma muno mana ba lunu na no lu nsogbu gi no na nsogbu ni mo jo ba ge sogbu sogbu ga na ba le just stand up tomorrow I'll call you back but stand up uh, repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I'm a sinner. I, I have no argument. I, no I am as guilty as the Holy Ghost has charged me. Write my name in the book of life. Grant me the assurance of my salvation. The joy of my salvation. The glory of my salvation. The unction of my salvation. The power of my salvation. Put a mark upon my forehead. Let it be known to everyone that I am now a member of the redeemed family of thine. Hear me, for I ask in Jesus' name. For everyone who has stood up to make this declaration, write down his or her name in the book of life. Amen. And assign an angel to each and every one of them. Amen. This angel shall travel with them through life Amen. and shall fight their every battle. Amen. Bless them with joy. Amen. Bless them with wisdom. Bless them with knowledge. Amen. Bless them with with, with with favor and direction. Amen. Bless them with good health. Amen. Bless them with long life. Amen. Whatever they shall lay their hand to do shall prosper. Amen. 